Today's episode and the next few episodes of Spike on the Mic are going to be a little bit different, but not by much. I recently accepted a position on the Commander Advisory Group, or CAG, along with Rachel Weeks, Daquan Watson, and U.S. Army Major Greg Sablon. I'm not going to get into that in depth in this episode, but if you want to hear more about the announcement and my thoughts on the role of the CAG, I'm going to throw another link in the show notes. Go watch that video before you continue with this episode. For the next little bit, I'm going to use Spike on the Mic as my primary platform for sharing my thoughts on issues that face our format. I'll be posting this content on YouTube with a limited visual component and closed captions. Or, if you prefer to listen rather than watch, you can also head over to anchor.fm slash spike feeders for the podcast RSS feed, or a link to download them on your favorite podcast aggregator. Today's episode won't be a hot-button debate topic per se, but it's one that I think is foundational to talk about any potential changes in the format. So I wanted to talk about this one separately and first. I'm going to be referring to this one quite a bit in future episodes, so listen up. I'm Jim, I'm your Spike on the Mic, and today we're going to be talking about what makes Commander different. Commander's not like other Magic formats. In fact, the other moderately popular formats that it even remotely resembles are variants of Commander. Commander has a philosophy document. If you've ever been tempted to ring up a member of the Rules Committee or the Commander Advisory Group, the best chance you have at persuading one of us is to read and understand this document, for a couple reasons. Number one, the philosophy document explains and outlines the motivation behind the majority of decisions that are made in the format. And number two, if you don't agree with a decision that the Rules Committee makes, but that decision is supported by the philosophy document, your time is going to be better spent talking about the philosophy document first. It's not that long, so without further ado, here's the entire Commander Philosophy document as it appeared on mtgcommander.net on January 27th, 2021. Commander is for fun. It's a socially interactive, multiplayer Magic the Gathering format full of wild interactions and epic plays, specifically designed as an alternative to tournament magic. As is fitting for a format in which you choose an avatar to lead your forces into battle, Commander focuses on a resonant experience. Each game is a journey the players share, relying on a social contract in which each player is considerate of the experiences of everyone involved. This promotes player interaction, intergame variance, a variety of playstyles, and a positive communal atmosphere. At the end of an ideal Commander game, someone will have won, but all participants will have had the opportunity to express themselves through their deck building and gameplay. The rules of Commander are designed to maximize these experiences within a game of Magic. The addition of a Commander, larger life total, and deck building restrictions emphasize the format's flavor. They increase deck variance and add more opportunities for participation and expression. The goal of the ban list is similar. It does not seek to regulate competitive play or power level, which are decisions best left to individual playgroups. The ban list seeks to demonstrate which cards threaten the positive player experience at the core of the format, or prevent players from reasonable self-expression. The primary focus of the list is on cards which are problematic because of their extreme consistency, ubiquity, and or ability to restrict others' opportunities. No single rule can establish criteria for a ban. There are mitigating or exacerbating factors. Some cards will represent an extreme on a single axis. Others are a confluence of multiple smaller issues. The following list is not exhaustive, nor is it a checklist, but it represents ways in which cards challenge the positive experiences players look for in Commander games. It includes cards which easily or excessively cause severe resource imbalances, allow players to win out of nowhere, prevent players from contributing to the game in a meaningful way, cause other players to feel they must play certain cards, even though they're also problematic, are very difficult for other players to interact with, especially if doing so requires dedicated, narrow responses when deck building. Interact poorly with the multiplayer nature of the format or the specific rules of Commander, or lead to repetitive gameplay. Cards which are banned likely meet a few of these criteria in a significant way. Not all cards which meet some of the criteria need to be banned. We prefer to be conservative with what goes on or comes off the ban list. Commander players often become emotionally attached to their decks through play and personalization, 
and we value that experience highly. We only want to disrupt that bond when necessary. Commander is designed to be a malleable format. We encourage groups to use the rules and the ban list as a baseline to optimize their own experience. This is not license for an individual to force their vision onto a playgroup, but encouragement for players to discuss their goals and how the rules might be adjusted to suit those goals. The format can be broken. We believe games are more fun if you don't. The things that make Commander unique can mostly be categorized into two categories. This isn't an exhaustive list, it's just the ones I think about most often. First, there's the structural differences. These are the nuts and bolts things that most people would point to if you ask them what makes Commander different. These are codified in the rules and ban list, and each one serves a different purpose in shaping our play experience. The big one is that Commander is a multiplayer format rather than 1v1. It's generally played in pods of four people, and by default, it's free for all. More opponents means you get to interact with more people on a given game night. The decisions you make are more complex, and there's room for political wheeling and dealing. It's also a lot harder to win the game when you have three opponents, because the second you start to build up an obvious advantage, you've got the collective resources of three players instead of one working against you. Even if you're not out in front, you've still got a mountain to climb that's three times as high when you look at the number of opponents. It's six times as high once you consider the fact that life totals start at 40 rather than 20. There's also an entire zone that's more or less unused in other formats. Yeah, yeah, I know. Emblems go there. Okay, let's move on. Starting the game with one or two cards in the command zone and always having access to them is a huge departure from regular 60 card formats. It essentially amounts to one or two cards that are always in your opening hand, in addition to your regular seven. It opens up space for interesting cards and strategies that often get cut from decks in other formats because they're too narrow or inconsistent. Even if these cards only synergize with your commander, they're almost never dead when you draw them. The purpose of the command zone, and I think this is borne out with the rationale for the tuck rule change about five years ago, but we'll get into that in a future episode, but it's that commander, the format, is predicated on having reasonable and consistent access to your commander. Now, obviously I'm talking in broad strokes here. It can still get stolen or turned into a tree, but that's the general idea. When you're building your deck, you have the freedom to assume that. You'll notice I haven't talked about the ban list here, even though it's in the philosophy document, and I know it's a big one. I have another 5,000 words specifically about the ban list that I'm gonna dump on you in an upcoming video, but for the purposes of this video, all you need to know is what's in the philosophy document. So let's bring it up again. The ban list seeks to demonstrate which cards threaten the positive player experience at the core of the format, or prevent players from reasonable self-expression. In this way, the commander ban list is different from other formats, which might curate a ban list for metagame diversity or for balance. The last structural difference I'm going to talk about is also a philosophical difference, which means it bleeds a little into the second category. Believe it or not, I'm referring to color identity. This is a rule that was created specifically for Commander that describes which cards you're eligible to run in your deck. The Commander variant uses color identity to determine what cards can be in a deck with a certain Commander. The color identity of a card is the color or colors of any mana symbols in the card's mana cost or rules text, plus any other colors defined by its characteristic defining abilities or color indicator. Unlike other formats that allow any format legal card in any deck, Commander gives you a deck building constraint that's reliant on the commander you've chosen. This accomplishes a few things, but it mostly forces you to look at cards that might be outside your box of five color good stuff. It's a minor obstacle that people can overcome with a little bit of creativity. Color identity also demonstrates one of the philosophical foundations of the format though, an emphasis on flavor and storytelling. If you play magic like people might play a fantasy role-playing or adventure game, you might imagine yourself as a powerful mage that's casting spells in an epic duel with your opponent. If you do, color identity reflects the idea that you've only got access to certain kinds of magic. Commander is an attractive format for this type of player because it allows them to focus on an immersive fantasy experience without being pushed out or dominated by players that prioritize structural rules over the aesthetic ones. I'm not saying that one group is more important than another, but Commander was created with the express purpose of being a space for these players, and I think it's important to acknowledge and preserve that as best we can. We've established by this point that Commander is a drastically different format, and outlined a few examples of what specifically makes it different. But does it have to be different, though? 
Well, let me explain with a little bit of a joke. Why is an elephant big, gray, and wrinkly? Because if it was small, white, and smooth, it would be an aspirin. Okay, maybe it's a bad joke, but it illustrates a pretty important point. Things are generally defined by their distinctive characteristics. If Commander was a 60-card, 20-life format with no command zone, it would be vintage. This is generally why the Rules Committee can be hesitant to make changes that you might think are no-brainers. It's also why it's so important for you to read and understand the philosophy document as a foundation for any persuasive argument about changes you'd like to see. The aspects of the format that might be holding back a rules change or a ban or unban you'd like to see are usually features of the format, not bugs. That's why this video is first in the Commander Advisory Group series of Spike on the Mic episodes. I'm going to be referring to it a lot in future episodes, and if you reach out to me, I'll probably refer to it in our conversation as well. As always, if you want to contact me to talk about the content of this episode, you can reach me on Discord. If you're watching this on YouTube, the invite code is on the screen, or you can click the link in the video description below. You can also reach out to me on Twitter at JimTSF, or email the Spike Feeders at thespikefeeders at gmail.com. I'm Jim, I'm your Spike on the mic, and thanks for talking about the things that make Commander different with me today. Hey, thanks for checking out the Spike Feeders on YouTube. If you're not subscribed yet, make sure you click that subscribe button. And you can click this link to check out our other great videos.